Hey everyone, Mr. K here. Today we are doing enemies that patrol, chase, and then go back and patrol. Um, quick little demo here, and I'm cheating. I never set up collisions, proper collisions with my wall for my player, but we don't really need that. We just need to show off what's going on here, and that's with the layer. I'm sorry, the enemy. So the enemy's on a patrol, and when you get too close to the enemy, the enemy chases you, and when you get far enough away, he just goes back and goes back on patrol again. And the yeah, added little benefit is that he will avoid obstacles if I can stop moving too far away from him. So he will chase you around things and once you're far away back, uh, too far away, he'll go back and avoid obstacles as well. So we're gonna go through how that works and a little bit of bonus stuff for my player movement, which I did something different today. So let's take a look and see what's going on. There it is. Okay, sprites, standard, I have a path that we're going to talk about, and we have our objects, that wall, it's just the wall, not even solid or anything, it just exists. Um, player, very quickly, we'll talk about that. It's a different movement system. Uh, the idea here is it takes, it starts off with your key bindings, and then it, call whatever you want, I'm calling it an axis. Uh, an x-axis and a y-axis it does that by subtracting your right and left down and up the order here is important um, because right is positive left is negative the idea is uh, key right will return based on this up here either a zero or a one if the key is being pressed or not so if it's just key right being held it'll return a one now if it's a key left being returned it'll return a one but since we're subtracting it comes a negative one so hence going left negative so anyway it takes that x-axis and the y-axis and gets values for that and then it finds the direction basically the angle that you need to go in so from zero zero and you can just think of a coordinate plane switched upside down of course because y is positive in the down direction here uh, from zero zero to where whatever you end up here it'll come up with that direction now, if you want, you can probably modify this so it works with a control pad. I know that's something that I've not even tried, but I know Game Maker is capable of it. So this way you can get a more, um, instead of just your up, down, left, right, and then the four diagonals, you can actually get in between movements as well. Because that's basically where I kind of stole this idea from is the um, axes. So it gets that direction. And then this one, I came up with my own. The reason is because in old systems, when you're moving by pixels, if you go over five pixels and down five pixels, well, if you want to go diagonal, that's the five pixels over squared plus the five pixels down squared and the square root of all that. It's Pythagorean theorem. Basically, diagonal means you move faster. So you're going at a certain speed left. If you move diagonal, you're going faster than that. And I wanted to get that done for this because you're being chased by enemies and diagonal is technically cheating. So in this case, if either the x-axis or the y-axis is not zero, basically you're moving, set the speed equal to five. So this is not a pixel movement, this is a speed and direction movement. Uh, I don't know if there's a proper name for it, like vectors. Uh, I know vectors have speed and direction. Um, or maybe not, that's angle and eh, whatever. I'm going to stop talking about that. Um, anyway, you move in as direct a speed of five in all directions. There's no cheating anymore. So that's this movement system. Um, somebody pointed out in the comments, so there you go. There's a fix for it. All right, enough about the player. The enemy. The enemy is where all the fun stuff is. So the enemy's got two events, a create event. In the create event, we get his starting X position and his starting Y position, and we store it. This is going to be very important because he needs to be able to return to his patrol. So wherever his point of origin in, he, origin is, he needs to be able to go back to it. So that's what these two are for. After that, he starts on his path. Now, if you ever never worked with paths before, it's, I don't know, I don't want to say confusing. It's a bit different, especially if all you've done is coding. Um, you can do it through code by adding points and whatnot, but there is a graphical interface for it. Uh, I created a path here with two points, 0, 0, and 100, 0. And this is not absolute. It can be, but it doesn't need to be. This final argument here in path start 
it says absolute. If you put true, your your object, whatever object is told to follow this, will follow literally in the room zero zero and one hundred zero. But since I have it set to false, it's relative. So it's relative to his position. So he will start it, you know, his this zero zero is basically where he starts, and then he will go one hundred pixels to the right. There's also another argument here for path action reverse, which means when he's at the end of the path, he's just going to reverse and go back to the beginning. That's where you see that back and forth. And I'm kind of working backwards here, but that is the speed of the path that he's going to follow, or how fast to follow the speed, how fast to follow the path. Sorry. And then, then path patrol is the name of the actual path um, that is set. So you have some options with this one back here. If you middle click on any function in Game Maker, if you didn't know this, it brings up the health menu. Uh, I guess there's two options, path start. And it'll give you a little bit of explanation of how it works and what to deal with, uh, how to use it, an example code down here. And then this is what I was talking about. And then you have some options about what to do when the object reaches the end of the path. So you could stop, restart, continue, or reverse. Um, play with those, see what you need, but you do have options for that. Okay, so that is paths in a nutshell. Play with it. This is a little funky down here about adding, inserting points, and deleting them, uh, but you'll get the hang of it after you play with it for a bit. Okay, so um, we start. We stored our origin, our enemy's origin, and we started them on their patrol path. Okay. Now the step event is, of course, where all the fun stuff is going to happen. Looks like a lot at first. Don't worry. Okay, first things first, every step of the game, we are going to get the player's X and Y position. Uh, the reason I have it stored in a variable is just because we keep calling it over and over again. Um, actually, just twice. Um, so I just stored it as a variable, so we only have to reference it once. All right, first up, if point distance less than 200, what's going on here is that we are getting the distance from the enemy to the player. If it's less than 200, 200 pixels I assume, he's going to stop his path and then do this, which is MP potential step object. It is for, oh, I forgot. Uh, uh, motion planning, that's it, right? Motion planning, yes, motion planning, sorry. Motion planning potential step. What this will do is it'll have the object map out essentially a path, a very short path, um, to where whatever object you dictate and take a step towards it. And on the way, it's going to attempt to, if you tell it to, there's other options, there's just MP potential step, but if you tell it to, it will avoid a specific object. So in this case, I'm telling it to avoid object walls. So if you're within that 200 pixel range, stop going on the path and start moving towards the player while avoiding objects, okay? The four arguments here, you got your X and the Y, whatever it's going to, it's goal, basically. Uh, the speed, how fast, pixels per step and then what to avoid. So this will take a step towards the goal at that speed, avoiding those objects. I recommend giving this a good look through. You might find other, um, other functions that might be a little bit more useful to you, but for what I'm doing, this worked out perfectly. It's simple. Okay, so that's that. Now, if the player is not within 200, this is where it gets a little bit more complicated. We have to have it stop chasing you, go back to the beginning, or go back to where it started, and then start patrolling again. So what we're going to check for is if we're not less than 200, okay? There's two things that could be going on if our player is not within 200. Either the enemy is back on patrol, or he's not on patrol. Now, if he's on patrol, we don't need to worry about anything. That's it. That's the default state, so we're, we're not concerned about that at all. What we do need to worry about is if he's the opposite of that, if he's not on patrol. So path index not equal to path patrol. It's basically saying, okay, if this enemy is not on patrol, 
what we're going to do is basically same thing up here except a different goal we're going to move back to our origin the start x and the start y a little bit slower this time and we're still going to avoid walls and then if at any point and this looks like a big giant mess if at any point we get back to start x and the start y then start your path up again and because the path starts path patrol that starts up this no longer registers as true and then basically he goes on his path and just continues until we get in his way again so i kind of brushed over this one let me just explain what's going on here very quickly excuse me x minus start x y minus start y what we're doing is we're finding the difference between the y and the start y and getting its absolute value the reason is is that the pixel calculation isn't perfect you're not going to get you know exactly 1735 as your x and y coordinates you're going to get 17.27 to 35.89 it's off so you can't just say if x equals start x and y equals start y what happens is your enemy will just kind of get to pretty close and then just start jittering around because it's trying to get perfect but it can't it's always going to be off by just a little bit so what we do is we just find the difference between the two and check to make sure that it's close enough so within two pixels i tried it within one pixel and it wasn't perfect every time every once in a while he just wouldn't get close enough to that start x and start y so i bumped it up to two and it seemed to be fine so if the difference between the enemy's position and where he starts is less than two we're going to call it close enough and then you could start your path okay so i'll run it one more time Put in the background too, so we'll take a look at it. There it. Is so I'm greater than 200 pixels away now. Within 200, and he's chasing me. Now that I'm too far away, he will. Now he's doing this MP potential step, and he's going to get close enough right now, and he's in his path. And now he's just going to patrol until I get close enough again. And that's about it. Um, one thing I'm going to caution you on: this is far from perfect so i'm going to try and get him stuck there go this should do it he can't get back there is another motion planning system in fact there's three motion planning systems um for those of you that want to get this perfect or don't want to have to worry about level design to get your players stuck or your enemies stuck this whole motion planning system that Game Maker has, there are linear functions, which I believe are the, like the really simple ones. There's potential. I'm probably oversimplifying this. Potential, which is what I'm using, which is good, but obviously not great. The one that I believe is the gold standard is this MP grid. Um, honestly, I haven't taken a look at it at all. Um, it's probably a whole video in and of itself. So if those of you that want to get this perfect, MP grid is probably what you're looking to do because obviously um, that is not what you want. So take a look at that if you want, but that is the big downside of this is that you will have your enemies get stuck in some circumstances. Other than that, it works pretty much what you needed it to do. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching. Bye.